Hello everyone and my name's Bob Mitch. For my normal subs I'm afraid this video isn't going to be a Star Citizen centric but if you're a notebook gamer and you're into Star Citizen then feel free to stick around as this video might have some interesting points for you. So this is a little bit of a different video for me. I'm not a hardware reviewer by any stretch of anyone's imagination but I think these kinds of follow-up videos especially for expensive tech like a gaming notebook are pretty handy for anyone who may consider still buying something along those lines for various reasons. With that, this is my long-term review of the late 2017 Razer Blade Pro FHD Gaming Notebook. For those who follow Razer stuff, this is not the balls to the walls one with the GTX 1080 with vapor chamber cooling and the 4K screen. This is the more affordable version with a normal Razer Blade keyboard, not the mechanical one, a GTX 1060 and a 1080p panel. To summarise this thing and its specs quickly, it's running a 7th gen i7 7700HQ. 16 gig of DDR4 RAM, as mentioned a GTX 1060 GPU, as well as a 17 inch 120 Hz Full HD IPS panel. For storage, it comes with a Samsung P951 256 gig NVMe SSD, as well as a 2 gig mass storage drive. It's got great I/O with a bunch of the green Razer USB 3.0 ports, HDMI 2.0 out for a 4K display, Thunderbolt 3, and a full size SD card reader. It's built entirely from aluminium, it has an unusual trackpad placement for some but I personally like it and said touchpad is great by the way, but if you've seen a Razer laptop up close or played with one, you know they feel rock solid, they look incredible with the chroma lighting and for the most part they could satisfy a portable gamer's wet dreams. I purchased mine back in November 2017, shortly after these things came out. I visit a lot of LAN festivals and I take my computing to work with me, so laptop gaming is a nice big bonus for me. Before I bought this, I was running around with the massive heft of the MSI GT80 on my back. I still have that slab of a notebook, and as much as I loved it, I did want something a bit more portable, shall we say. And I, like many other PC gamers, had given the Razer Blade laptops that lusty look before when we'd first seen them, but dubbed them too expensive for what you were getting. They're pricey, that's no secret. The early 2017 version of the Blade Pro with the 1080 and the 4K screen was £4,000 for God's sake. That's an insane investment for something like this. And as for the normal Razer Blade 14, you can buy similarly spec laptops from other companies for less cost. When I saw the late 2017 one though, it struck a chord. With its specs, it struck an awesome middle ground between portability and performance. It had the same awesome design as the more expensive one, and while still more expensive than other similarly spec laptops, it had the great build quality of that one piece aluminium frame. So I grabbed one, and it's been a year since. How's this thing held up since then? Well, as a very rapid, too long didn't watch, just great. It has a few sticking points, but we'll get to those. For the most part, this thing's been fantastic and a joy to use and carry with me to work, when I'm out, or when I go to LAN events. Lots of people hear various horror stories from Razer about customer service and RMAs, battery swelling and other nightmarish tales, yet with this laptop I've not had any of that. It still feels, looks and performs as it did the very first day I turned it on, and it still makes me smile when I take it out wherever I'm going and people wander over to have a look, normally because they get mesmerised by the keyboard. I've comfortably gamed, worked and streamed on this thing throughout the year I've owned it, and it's performed beautifully, even more so when I switched the shipped NVMe SSD out for a 500GB Samsung 970 EVO. The sound and speakers are great, the screen's gorgeous and doesn't ghost, and the keyboard is as strong and responsive as it was on day one. I've not had any keys feel loose, wobbly or fall out. It's easy to upgrade both the storage and RAM if I want to do more to it, and it's easy to clean the fans, because the bottom is one big piece that pops off after removing the R5 screws. That's the gushy good stuff, what's the negative sticky bits? As ever, with a lot of gaming notebooks it can get loud, and it can get toasty. Most games that people might play on the move, or at a LAN event like CSGO or League of Legends, won't bother this thing. It'll crush the frame rates and it'll be fairly quiet. But push it with titles like The Witcher 3, Final Fantasy XV, and of course the aforementioned resource swallowing Star Citizen Alpha, and the laptop will let you know about it. Headphones, of course, can negate this, but your mileage may vary. And let's be honest, if you're into the realm of gaming notebooks, you know you're making compromises on the fan noise front anyway. That said, it's nowhere near the loudness of its smaller brother, the Blade 14, and it's quieter than other notebooks I've encountered at events like Insomnia. Plus, if you're not hunting for 60 FPS when you're plugged in, 
You can turn on Whisper mode in GeForce Experience and it stays pretty quiet most of the time then on, but your games are limited to 40 FPS. What else is wrong? Razer Synapse. I don't know what it is or why, and if anyone could tell me I'll be eternally grateful, but from time to time Synapse has a mind of its own and puts the laptop into sleep mode. It could be a driver setting or an update somewhere, but the laptop will blink all of a sudden and then just go to sleep, and then I have to poke at the keys to wake it up and log in again. Pain in the arse. Synapse also trips and restarts from time to time. What I mean by this is you will have your lighting setting set as I have here now. This is a custom wave pattern with more colour than the default razor one and my key process trigger the keys to react with the white colour for a second or two. However, when Synapse trips, the keys will stick as though you're holding the last one you pressed down. This lasts about 4 seconds and then the keys will go back to a default lighting pattern for another 2-3 to three seconds. During this time you can use the keyboard again as normal. And then after that your own pattern will kick back in. It's very odd. Next, Power Brick. It's small, which is fantastic, but as I understand at release, it's the same one that shipped with the Blade 14. No real issue here, as the Blade Pro FHD has more or less the same internals, so power itself won't be an issue. But it's basically the bare minimum essential 165 watts that the brick provides to have this thing running at full tilt that gets really hot. Really, really hot. So much so that I actually make sure mine isn't covered up by anything now as a precaution when I get it out. Since then, Razer has since relabeled this brick from their site and now has a different 250 watt adapter that's earmarked for the Blade Pro. So perhaps the new ones ship with these newer models. And really, that's about it. There's a couple of other minor things like the built-in microphone not being great and the aluminium case means it isn't so much as a fingerprint magnet and more of a fingerprint gravity well so you need to buy and carry a cloth with you. Razer does give you a tiny little cloth in the box but it's useless. Just spend a pound slash dollar on a thick microfiber one and you're set. All said and done I adore this little piece of engineering. It's portable, it's thin for a gaming notebook, and it performs really, really well unless you're really trying to hammer it with something hard, and then it'll let you know about it. It boots in seconds and is normally ready to go before my arse even hits my chair, and it feels great to play games on, and as I keep saying, it has a fantastic, simple look that always goes down a hit. The best thing, of course, is that with it, as well as most of Verizon's other notebooks now having Thunderbolt 3, later on I can pick up an external GPU enclosure and stick a newer desktop card into it, which will lose me a bit of performance because of bandwidth limitations over Thunderbolt if I'm not using it as an external monitor, but even then it'll extend the usable lifetime of this laptop for some time to come, although I'd hardly call it outdated yet anyway. These particular laptops are retailing for about £1,800 nowadays, which is still a little bit more than competitors' notebooks with similar specs, but for that extra bit of money you're getting something that's a bit thinner, a slightly bigger screen, and has simply fantastic looks and rock-solid build quality. I intend to enjoy mine for years to come. If you have any questions about the Blade Pro or anything else, please feel free to comment below and I'll answer when I can. If you like Star Citizen, my main content revolves around those internet spaceships and making things go horribly wrong with them, so please check out my other videos. Aside from that, I hope that was informative, and thank you for watching.